In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Our beloved fathers, deacons, nuns, monks, and our beautiful and blessed congregation, those who are with us in the Holy Church of St. Shimon Bar Sabai and St. Mary, and those who are watching us through live streaming, may the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, and protect you, deliver you from every evil tribulation, whether it be visible or invisible. And we have a very cute angel running around in the church. Her name is, if I'm not mistaken, Veronica. Is that correct? Oh, she's cute. You know, children, when they are a bit chubby, oh. <laughs> I pray the angels in heaven are a bit chubby. <laughs> They're very cute. They are absolutely innocent, pure. They're beautiful. Children always remind us that we need to be as innocent as they are to the best humanly possible level. Little kids, they illustrate simplicity of heart, humility. They illustrate um, innocence at a very beautiful way. The gospel of today the Lord Jesus is actually pointing at two kind of groups where he was not happy with. And these two kind of groups were present in the temple of God in the Old Testament, according to the Old Testament church, the temple of God, and they were the Pharisees and the scribes. Also, the priests were naughty, but in this gospel, he's focusing on these two groups, the Pharisees and the scribes. The Israelite nation is made out of three groups, priests, Pharisees, and scribes. Priests offering sacrifices for the remission of sins. Pharisees putting everything under the microscope, making sure everything is adhered to to the letter, missing out nothing, checking every corner, every angle, every stop, every exclamation mark, checking the smallest details, literal people in other words, and the scribes, the law writers. So the law writers and the Pharisees putting the law under the microscope, both of them failed With the following, the Pharisees looked at everyone's fault except their own. The Pharisees looked at everyone's mistake and put it under the microscope in detail except their own mistakes. And the scribes who wrote the law did not walk according to the law. So the scribes failed walking and the Pharisees failed seeing. They failed. The Lord used a very painful word, hypocrites, hypocrites. My beloved, when we come to the house of the Lord and when we start working in the house of the Lord, it requires something foundational. And this foundation applies at every place you may be. But since, I'm since the Holy Bible talks about the temple, the house of the Lord, 
then I'll talk about the house of the Lord and I'll go to your own houses as well. This foundational thing that is required from us, God will ask us of it, that is humility. Humility. Probably you've been hearing this word from this bishop a lot of times. Well, maybe because it's extremely important, that's why it's being repeated. Repetition of things signifies one thing, great importance. When you keep on repeating the same thing, you're sending a message saying it is extremely important. That's why I'm repeating it to get it through to you. I'm seeking your attention. My beloveds, it requires humility in order to avoid being a Pharisee or ending up being a scribe. It requires humility. The problem, when we start doing it our way, when we start seeing things with our own eyes, when we start knowing things with our own intellectual capacity, you see, our intellect will take us to one place only, this realm. See, our brains, our understanding, only works within this realm, cannot go outside of this realm. That's why we use the word understand. Understand is a compounded word. Two in one, under the stand. So what is I understand? I'm saying to myself, I can only grasp, I can only fathom, I can only comprehend, I can only get what is under the stand of my intellectual level. Anything above the stand of my intellectual level, I cannot understand because it's above the stand, not under the stand. So when I am walking in the house of the Lord with my own eyes, with my own intellectual level, it's going to take me to this realm and this realm only. What is this realm? Materialistic, tangible. So where will your intellect lead you to? It will lead you to one place, ending up being a materialistic, literal, selfish human being. Period. You use your head always, you'll end up a worldly person. You'll end up living in this world for this world, nothing to do with Christ. Even though you are in his house and you call yourself a Christian, a baptized soul receiving the body and the blood. But when you, deem, when you do things your way, you're saying to Jesus, sorry, I don't need you because I can manage. When the Lord came the first time over 2,000 years ago and he called the entire world, some accepted the calling, some rejected. You get invited to a wedding, sometimes you go, sometimes you don't. You miss out on a great party, mate. Well, it's not a party, but yeah, it's a party. The Lord called us all without any differentiation, all colors, all walks of life, all tongues and nations. Some came, some refused. Those who accepted the calling and came to him, you know what the Lord said to them that they must do before even starting to work for him. Before you say, Lord, I came, what can I do for you? Before you do anything, my dear friend. You know what the Lord said? He said, you want to follow me? Bishop Murray, you want to follow me? Yes, Lord. Okay, you need to die. What? Yes, you need to die. But Lord, if I die, I can't work. If I die, I can't see. If I die, I can't hear. If I die, I can't think. If I die, I cannot do anything. I can't do nothing. He said, 
Exactly. This is exactly what I want you to do. Absolutely nothing. Because the moment you start doing things your way in my house, you'll ruin it. So the only way to protect my house and you, you need to die. The dilemma of Christendom is moi, me. This is the dilemma of the church. You could come and say, well, we have our theological indifferences. Yeah, I'll agree with you to somewhat degree. But the core of it, <laughs> the foundation of it, the heart of the division is moi. Me. Why did the church split? This good looking chair. Once Australia can get that trade back with China, it's very cheap to make. Mr. Hacha Wacha Tonga will do it for you for ten dollars. The problem is the chair, the throne. The biggest schism in the church was because of the throne in 1054. If anybody comes and says, oh, because I'm Peter, you're not knight, get a life. Yes, get a life. Leave Peter alone. Seriously, leave Peter alone. Peter's got nothing to do with, with it. It's got to do with, with you. You've got a problem. You've got too much pride in you. That's the problem. If every church leader seeked humility, you know how they would have fought with each other? They would have fought based on love. You know how they would have fought? This church leader would have come and said, to the other church leader, they said, this throne is yours. The other one said, no, 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 the throne is yours. No, no, please, the throne is yours. They would have fought. Everyone wants to give his throne to his brother, for his brother. That's how they would have fought. But no, when it's prideful, this is my throne. Anyone sits on it, I will plug him and throw him in the deep. That's the dilemma. So when you use your own intellect in the house of the Lord, your intellect will take you to this tangible realm, materialism. That's why the Lord Jesus said to the scribes and the Pharisees, you guys say it is okay to make, a, uh, to make uh, any vows, you know, uh, against the temple, but it's not okay, but it's not okay you know, to make any vows that is to do with the offering. Or the altar, it's okay. Oh, sorry, the temple, but it's not okay to make vows or to, to make an oath uh, towards any gold or anything of precious value. He says, which is more valuable, the temple or the gold? It is the temple that makes gold, gold. It is the altar that make the offering sacred. It is not the offering that makes the altar sacred. Their eyes went to gold and to offering because when you bring an offering, with the offering comes money. And gold is money, material, materialism. You know, one of the temptations where the Lord was tempted when he fasted the 40 days and the 40 nights, the first temptation when this, when the, when the enemy, the devil came and tempted the Lord and said, if you are the son of God, 
Say to this stone to be bread. Say to this stone to be bread. The enemy is attacking your intellect. Why is he attacking your intellect? Because the enemy wants to draw your intellect. He wants to snatch your intellect and make it focus on bread. What is bread? Material. It's not talking about bread that you buy and eat. No. Bread here, everything of a materialistic nature is represented in the bread. So the enemy is trying to take your thinking, to take your intellect and make it focus on materialism. Why? Because if he wins and make you focus on materialism, he will take you away from God. You'll end up an earthly, worldly, materialistic person. God will not be present in your life. Money will be your God. Fame will be your God. Wealth will be your God. Prestigious life will be your God. Going on holidays, if we want to make it in a simple English. So all you're going to care about is, I want to have fun. I want to dress up in this way. I want to have all the brands. I want to eat, drink, jump. I want to go downtown and dance with somebody. Poor Whitney Houston. May I correct the lyrics? It is absolutely wrong to say, I want to dance with somebody. Somebody could be anybody. That is a very dangerous statement to claim. You need to specify who you want to dance with. And the only way for you to be safe and sound, you better dance with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the only one. And I'm yelling, I know. For the Lord. You need to specify. What did the Lord reply to the devil? He said, it is not by bread alone that a man shall live, but by every word that is uttered from the mouth of God. Wow. The Lord turned materialism into spirituality. The word is spirit. He said, you're trying to snatch my intellect as a human being. You're trying to snatch my intellect and make it materialistic. I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to make it all spiritual for my intellect is of God's no one else. You need to die. You want to work for me? The first step to working with me and for me, you must die to your old person. Look, I don't want to, I don't want to preach. I want to talk to you at home, at work. Let's come to home. Right. Work is all walks of life. There is Christians, there is non-Christians, there is atheists. But at home, as a Christian family, Christian family at home. Problems begin when we start focusing on things our way. Problems begin when we start focusing on things our way, not God's. Problems at home will only be problems when God is missing in all of that home life. Who is your foundation as a Christian family? Who is he? Who is your foundation? As a Christian family. Is it you as a husband? Is it you as a wife? Is it your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your children? Is it the house itself? Is it materialistic things? Who's your foundation? Or is it Jesus Christ? If Jesus Christ is the foundation to the house, one thing must happen. 
and must take place. Humility. Humility. The first fruit when you encounter, I pray you all encounter truly the Lord Jesus. When you encounter the true Christ, not the one we've made up. <laughs> because in the 21st century, the church has created a new Christ that follows the church, not leads the church. That's why they ended up in Mount Sinai with the Ten Commandments relating to climate change. What a bunch of losers. Losers. Foolishness. For the forgiveness of Mother Earth. But they are not asking for the forgiveness of the Creator of everything and everyone. So you've offended Earth, to you it's a big deal. But you offending God, it's all right, it's nothing. Because the God of the Christian is not the same God of the non-Christians denominations. So we're not going to bring God into the equation. Because we don't all share the same God. Yet, dare so to say, we all worship the same God. We are all the children of God. You know what? If any Christian leader, regardless what their position is, whether it be big or small in the church, for that Christian leader to come and say, all people are the children of God, this is a false statement. Theologically, it is absolutely incorrect. The only time any human being becomes the child of God when that human being accepts and receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior over their life. Then it is through Jesus only you become the child of God. Without Christ, it is impossible for you to be the child of God. So how should we restate it? It should be said this way. God is one. The creator of all is one. And his love for all mankind is the same. But all of us as humans are not the same when it comes to God. Are not the same. What are you going to say to St. Paul's epistles. Are you going to remove them from the Bible? Or are you going to adhere to them as being authentic word of God, which are authentic? When he says, because of their wickednesses, because of their stubbornness and disobeying God, God left them to their own minds. Because they rejected the true divine God, God left them to their own minds. What did their own minds do to them? They ended up worshiping the creation instead of the creator. So today it is worshiping mother nature, the creation, not the creator. Now this is called hypocrisy you see the Pharisees and the scribes never ended they continued from the time of the Lord and there's plenty of Pharisees and scribes of the New Testament church as well what has changed one thing technology instead of donkeys camels and horses now motorbikes cars and planes only technology changed nothing else has changed same old, same old. When we ignore the calling of Christ, that we need to die to our old person. What is dying to your old person? You ask the Lord, you need to ask him. Say, Lord, I am the biggest troublemaker for my own self. I am the worst enemy to my own self. 
If it was not for me, Satan, I could have handled. People that go against me, I could have handled. When, when it comes to me, I am the worst enemy and worst nightmare of my own self. The most dangerous enemy to you is you. Is you. When I don't die to my old Adam, I'll deny the latter Adam, Jesus Christ. When I deny the latter Adam, Jesus Christ, I'll live a life of materialism. Materialism is, you don't do nothing for me, it's all about you. <laughs> if you don't get me a $50,000 diamond ring for my engagement, get out of my sight so are you telling me that you love me according to what i buy you so you measure your love for me according to what i give you is this love no this is selfishness no wonder marriages nowadays don't last because they are built on the wrong foundation Christ is missing. When Christ is the heart of this household and the head of this household, both parties, husband and wife, it takes two to tango, both parties, they need to say, I love you, I live with you and for you, in sickness and in health, in poorness and in richness, in good times and in bad times. When you're sick, I'll carry you. When I'm sick, you carry me. When, when you are poor, I'll share this poorness. And when you're rich, I'll share the richness because what you are matters not. What matters is who you are. When I chose you to give my life to you in marriage, I, ch I chose you, not what you do, but for you as a person. When you die to your old person, all of a sudden, things that were problematic for you now they are not anymore they are not believe me believe me when I say believe me I mean like believe the Lord not me but believe me believe me when Jesus touches your heart then and then only you'll understand what I'm saying because it takes the master to teach you and reveal to you what this piece of wreck is telling you. Ask the Lord to change you. Ask the Lord to erase you. Ask the Lord to give you that death which he asked of you from the very word go. And that death is Baptism. That's why anyone who comes to Jesus Christ, whether babies, infants, or old, the beginning to their Christian journey is baptism. Because baptism is death, burial, and resurrection in the Lord. Death, burial. That's why when the baby comes, when the baby comes, what do we do to the baby? We strip them naked just like God created me we don't let no earrings no bracelets no rings nothing no piece of cloth no piece of metal nothing strip that baby from head to toe fully stripped fully naked why because this child is the son of Adam is the son of Adam 
What happened to our father Adam in the Garden of Eden when he broke God's word? He saw himself naked. And when he saw himself naked, he was embarrassed, so he hid behind a tree. Sin leads us to nakedness. Nakedness leads us to shamefulness. When you live that former Adam, you'll be naughty like him. When God came, the Lord God came, Adam, where are you? He said, I'm hiding behind the tree. Why are you hiding? Oh, you ate from the forbidden tree, didn't you, Adam? I told you, don't eat. Who told you you're naked? You, you ate from the tree, did, didn't you? What did Adam say? Look, look, look how stubborn, man. Look, look. He is trying to prove God wrong. He said, listen, God. Yeah, I'm naked. I broke your word, yes. But you know what? It's not my fault. It's your fault. You gave me Eve. Who told you to give me Eve? I was doing all right. You created me, I had the whole garden, I had all of Fairfield Nita City to myself. Nobody shared Fairfield Nita City with me. The moment of Uvi came, all hell broke loose. Your fault. Why did you give me Eve? Ah, you still denying that you're at fault. Yes, because I looked at the situation, I analyzed the situation, and I said, it's God's mistake. You see, when you walk in that former stubborn Adam, you will point the finger at everyone, including God, but not you. For a change, say, Lord, it's my fault. It's my fault. When a wife admits her mistake and goes to the husband and says to him, it is my fault, hubby. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. I am saying to you, please forgive me. You know what you will do, my daughter, to your husband? You have put him as a ring in your finger for the rest of his life and your life. He is yours forever. Just admit it. No. I will never ever say to him it's your fault. I will never give him this privilege. Why? That was a Middle Eastern style. Why? The come on. You know, we need, we need to think, we need to think, which one is harder? Which one is harder? To say, I'm sorry, which will take less than a second. And it's just a word, so easy said, so swiftly said. Or to fight and argue and quarrel and get angry and cry and whinge, complain, well, bo, what's up? And for days and for weeks, I'm not gonna cook, I'm not gonna wash, I'm not gonna talk. All this energy, it would have taken a word. A word. A word. Sorry. One day, this husband and wife, they were fighting, right? World War III. Oh, no, 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 no. So anyway, the husband got angry. She got on his nerves, and he lost it, and he told her off. She went into the room. Five minutes later, the husband is in the hall, uh, cooled down a little bit. And then he said, oh, man, that was very harsh. What I said to her was extremely harsh. So he felt bad. He went to the room. 
to apologize, seeing his, the wife putting all the clothes in the luggages. And then he started saying, I'm really sorry, my sweetheart. I, I shouldn't have been, I shouldn't have lost it like that. What I, whatever I said, I'm, I regret, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please forgive me. So he apologized and then, and then after that he said, honey, what are you doing? She said, oh, no, it's okay. These are winter clothes, summer is coming. <laughs> Law, yeah. <laughs> but you see what happens when you say a few nice words? It's all of a sudden winter clothes. She's not going to her parents. Or the worst case scenario, you go to your parents, I stay at home. <laughs> Why did the Pharisees, the scribes, go against the Lord Jesus? Because they did it their way in the house of the Lord. And their way, God will always be in the way. <laughs> You're my way, God. So move out of the way. You need to die. Baptism is death. The baby comes naked. <laughs> naked. You, you come from your Adam, former Adam, sinful. You, you come with, the, with, the, with sin. So you come naked. We submerge you in that baptismal font three times, resembling the three days and three nights which the Lord spent at the tomb. Three times, fully naked. After the third time, we bring him out, or we bring her out. I remember, can I tell you this? Uh, babies, when he baptized, oh, they're adorable, adorable, adorable. One day they brought this giant baby. <laughs> Nine months old, but he had layers over layers over layers. The cheeks were so big and mighty, they were dangling down the face. The poor baby could never smile. He couldn't raise his mouth to smile. It was too heavy. Anyway, I carried him. I almost dropped him. I needed a crane, honestly, one of those slings, you know, in nursing homes. I needed one of those cranes. But anyway, I carried him. Just a piece of information, okay? Don't tell anyone. When we anoint the baby with holy oil and the holy oil touches water, it is extremely slippery. <laughs> Imagine this. A one ton, <laughs> nine months baby. Honestly, I was, I was struggling. I'm telling you the truth. I was struggling. My back is gone too. I got two discs gone. <laughs> I said to the parents, why did you leave him too late? They said, it's only nine months. I said, it's nine years, not nine months. <laughs> anyway, so we anointed the baby head to toe. I came and I put him right on top of the baptismal font. He looks down, he's, he's mature. <laughs> he's, he looked down and he looked at me. He said, you think you're going to put me in this water in your dreams? I came, so-and-so to be baptized in the name of the... He grabbed his hands on, on the edge of the baptismal font. If I had pushed him any further, I would have dislocated his shoulders. I took him out again, deep breath, came back again. So-and-so is baptized in the name of, oh, he grabs the edge of the, he said, I'm not going down that easy, baby. I said, I'll fix you on the third time. So and so is baptized the name. As he came to grab the edge, I take my hand faster than Formula One. I slap the arm, slips, submerge him. <laughs> now, for those who are newly ordained into the priesthood, this is a nice piece of information. Slap it and submerge. He drank some water, I could hear. <laughs> he comes out. <laughs> After the baby comes out, naked, the third time, he gets dressed in white. The dress of righteousness, the dress of the kingdom of God. This dress is Christ himself. That's why it's white. White, purity, innocence, holiness, righteousness, life, eternal. And then we put two ribbons as a crown. We make them as a crown 
and we call it a crown, but that crown is made out of two ribbons, one white and one red. And we say to the parents of that child, what changed your baby from fully naked to fully clothed, your nakedness is gone, your shame is gone, your sin is gone, is the two ribbons that made this white dress possible. White ribbon and red ribbon. This is Christ, perfect God, white ribbon, perfect man, red ribbon. Red represents blood, humanity. So red represents humanity and white represents divinity, heaven. It is the God who became man in the person of Christ that clothed you with the outfit of heaven. But now you live in Christ, no longer you. But the problem, I'm still walking in the house of the Lord with me. Me, me, me. Remember, when Jesus is your Lord and Savior, even if it's the other side's fault, you go and apologize. Because humility, it takes humility for you to apologize even when it's not your fault. It takes humility. So you go to your wife and you say, honey, I'm really sorry if I've hurt you. But in your heart say, I never did that. But don't say that in her face because you'll ruin it. So, honey, I'm really sorry that I've hurt you. In your heart, not. <laughs> I apologize in your heart, not. And I'll make it up to you in your heart, not. And just move on with your life, not. <laughs> Christ is beautiful. When you truly allow him to come into your heart, he is beautiful. No more me. It'll be him. It'll be him. So my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, let Jesus run the family. Don't be stubborn about it. As a wife, you've been stripped of your rights. Let Christ avenge you let Christ don't do it yourself your husband maybe is stubborn you're stuck with him tough luck you can't just throw him out he's your husband before God and men you gave your vows so tough luck tough luck you can't change your husband Christ can you can't change your wife. Christ can. Let Christ lead your life as husband and wife. And when the church lets, lets Christ to lead her, the church is fine. When the shepherd and the flock go and bow before Christ, the church is in peace and prosperity. But when the shepherd does things his way, he will destroy the flock and eventually destroys himself. Christ is humility. Let him humble you the way he is humble. Let him humble you. And lastly, I know I talk a lot. And I love it. Sorry, in my heart, not. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord said, do not call for, your, your, for yourselves a father on earth, for there is only one father in heaven. Do not call for yourselves a teacher on earth, for there is only one teacher in heaven who is God. Unfortunately, some Christians came and said, you see, why are you calling a priest father? 
the Lord Jesus said, do not call no one a father on earth because only your, your father is in heaven. So don't call someone like this bishop father. You are going against the Lord. Excuse moi. Have you not read what the Lord God said to Moses? Respect father and mother so that I may bless you and give you life abundant. That law, that word is eternal forever. So God will never go against himself, against his word. So when he says respect father and mother, he's not going to come and say, don't call your, for yourselves a father. Therefore, there are certain passages in the Holy Bible are not meant for everyone. There are certain passages in the Holy Bible are not meant for everyone. The Lord Jesus said certain things for certain people only. Don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong. When the Lord said, do not call for yourselves a father, he was, he was addressing the 12 apostles, no one else. No one else. Imagine if the Lord said this to everyone, don't call yourselves for yourselves a father on earth, for your father is in heaven only. So now you're going to go home and cancel your parents. What a disaster. What a disaster. The children will be lost. Everyone will end up in the street. And the commandment that says respect your father and mother is broken. You're living in sin. But the Lord said it to the 12 apostles. Why? Because the 12 apostles are popes. All of them. Patriarchs. The head of the church on earth. All of them. Not just one. All of them are heads of the church on earth. He said, after the patriarch, after the pope, who comes? Christ. If the church leader brings any other human being outside of Jesus Christ, and that church leader listens to someone else outside of Jesus Christ, the leader will destroy the church. The Lord says to the church leaders, the head of the church, do not have for yourself a father except God, because after you, God comes. After you, the teacher comes, the teacher, which is Jesus Christ. So you take your guidance from the Lord and the Lord only. You take your orders from your heavenly father and your heavenly father only because you are the head of the church. If you put another head to yourselves beside Christ, you'll destroy yourself and you will destroy the flock. So this statement is for those who have the priesthood rank as church leaders only, not for the laity, not for everyone, please. Not for everyone, my goodness. So yes, you can call a priest father. It is biblical, it is biblical. It is biblical. It is biblical, my beloved. Do not call for yourselves a teacher, church leaders, because the teacher is supposed to be Jesus Christ only. If you get taught by someone else, you're lost. The flock is lost. And I'll leave you with this. The epistle of St. Jude is one chapter only. And it is placed before the book of Revelation. The second last chapter in the New Testament. In the epistle of St. Jude, one chapter, he says, in the end of times. So the epistle of St. Jude is written for the 21st century, by the way. I don't have the time. It is written for the 21st century, not for his time, not for any other time, the 21st, our time. He says, in the end of times, 21st century generation, people of the 21st century will walk in three ways. In the way of Cain, in the way of Bil'am, in the way of Korah. He mentions three names, extremely important names we need to adhere to. 
Saint Jude, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, prophesied how people will live in the end of times in the 21st century. 2000 years ago, he prophesied how we will live and his word is accurate 100%. Why? Because it is of God's. They will walk in the way of Cain, Bil'am, Korah. Cain, the son of Adam, who killed his brother Abel. Cain represents me. Bil'am represents greed. Korah represents priesthood denial. The three are vividly clear in the 21st century. Who is Korah? Korah was at the time of Moses and Aaron. The Lord God came out of the entire Israelite nation. He said to Moses, I want you to choose your brother Aaron and his sons, anoint them as priests for my tabernacle, for my altar. God himself spoke and said, Moses, anoint Aaron and his sons, not daughters. What do we call them? Priestess or hostess? Doesn't work. A priest woman, it is not biblical against the Lord's will and word. Women preachers in the house of the Lord is wrong. Is anybody home? Moses, choose your brother, man, Aaron. Choose his sons, men, to be priests for my tabernacle and my altar. Korah was an Israelite. So the Israelite of the Old Testament are the Christians of the New Testament. So this Christian, this Israelite man said, hang on a second. He started talking to the Israelite people. He said, what does Aaron think himself is? So is he something special? If he is a priest, I'm a priest. All of us are priests, guys. No difference. So if Aaron can bring an offering to the altar of the Lord, I, Korah, can bring the offering to the altar of the Lord. So he grabs the censer to bring and bring incense to the altar. Before getting to the altar, God became angry. He opened the earth, swallowed Korah, and swallowed everyone that followed Korah, and all died and perished. So Korah represents the denial of priesthood rank. Because the Lord Jesus said it in the book of Revelation chapter 1 and 4, and he made us all priests and kings to God the Father. Wow! You need to read within context. Do not go out of the context. He made us priests and kings to God the Father. Do you understand what that means? Do you know who he was referring to when he said he made us priests and kings? He was referring to the 24 elders sitting around the throne of Jesus Christ. The 24 elders, my beloved, are priests and kings. Well, if you're all priests, then you have to be all kings. Next time you fly to London, go and knock at the place, at the residence of Charles the king. And say, hey, Charles, hey, go and mate. You're a king, I'm a king, so get out of my sight. Can it work? No. The Lord God chose Aaron and his sons, priests, not the entire Israelite nation. And the Lord God, the same Lord God who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the same, when he came, he chose 12 men to be priests, not the entire Israelite nation. Not everyone is a priest in the specific sense.
in the generalized sense yes but in the specific not I'll give you this example I know it's, I spoke a lot sorry for me. what is the role of a doctor to heal a person can we all be doctors in the general sense yes when you see someone feeling down upset you go and sit with them start talking to them few nice words here and there you lift up their morales all of a sudden now they are cheerful bubbly laughing you've healed that person you in the general sense you're a doctor but does that mean because you made them laugh now you've healed them you say I'm a doctor and you walk into the operating theater and start chopping people they'll chop you it's very simple we are all priests in the general sense what is the priest role two things give an offering and preach the gospel the priest's job is to preach the word and give an offering can we all be priests as laity in the general sense yes every time you come to church what have you offered your time your time you offered it to the Lord you've sacrificed your time for the Lord it's the same sense as the priest offers a sacrifice which is the body and the blood of Christ you've offered your time as a sacrifice in the generalized sense you're a priest and when you preach to your children at home to your family members about the Lord you are a priest in the general sense but when you do these things that doesn't give you the authority to get up on the altar and offer the blood and the body and the blood of Christ and preach his word you are not a priest in the specific sense in the general yes not a specific the specific are certain men chosen by God himself period period even when you look at the Old Testament not all, not all of them were priests some were scribes some were Pharisees and some were priests all of them were not the scribes and Pharisees did not offer animals on the altar the priest did of the Old Testament I'm talking so in the specific sense not everybody's a priest in the general yes so we need to differentiate my beloveds Korah is priesthood denial today within the apostolic church the children of this holy mother the church are leaving and saying now my eyes are open the Holy Spirit descended on me and my eyes are open now the apostolic churches are blind they are after following traditions excuse me these traditions are based on Holy Bible teachings they are not tradition of men they are tradition based on biblical truths the Lord will never operate outside of his church no matter what because he promised it is for his name's sake he will never go to an individual and say to that individual my church which I built established with my own blood on Calvary don't listen to my church because now I've opened your eyes there is no such thing there isn't this is not the Holy Spirit and I can show any soul that think that the Holy Spirit opened their eyes and made them go against the apostolic teaching sooner or later they will find out they were so misled by Satan himself I'm saying it out of love concern believe me out of humility I'm saying it. the Lord will never go against the church church leaders do whatever but the church is holy the men are not but the church is because the Lord is the founder and the establisher of it Cain me Bil'am, greed, Korah, self, uh, priesthood denial. We see the three vividly clear working so hard 
in the end of times 21st century look at the people of the 21st century everybody is about me 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 we're fighting because I am not happy I don't want this I don't like this it's all about me and the greed has blinded people in the church and in the secular world why are we fighting why is the church in turmoil because church leaders are seeking thrones are seeking worldly glories are seeking high places they don't want to sit at the gutter and share a meal with a homeless guy they lost touch of humility church leaders became worldly and look at the world why are they killing each other because of greed greed has blinded men visa AstraZeneca, moderna the nonsense the lies of the 21st century money became your god you foolish people blind people are you gonna take that money to the grave no no greed is bil'am he sold the israelite nation for money he made them sin the children of god made them sin in a deceptive way for him not to lose those boxes of gold a pagan king bought the prophet of god with money and today the pagan world government leaders have bought church leaders with money again bil'am is alive and the priesthood rank is being denied there is no priests there is no fathers there's only one father and there is only one high priest jesus christ well, if he's a high priest, that means there is priests and he's the high above them. You know why I cover my head? Because hmm? in the epistle of St. Paul, it says men cannot cover their heads. You know why I cover it? Because yes, I am a man. <laughs> I'm sure of that. <laughs> yeah. And I will always be that man. Okay. I cover my head because I'm a man uh, and I am a priest at the same time. So when I cover my head, I'm reminding myself there is someone above my head as a priest. I am a priest and Christ is the high priest. That's why I cover my head. When I cover it, I remind myself there is someone above me. That someone is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the high priest. I am a priest and he is the high priest above my head. He is my covering. Yes. Don't walk like the 21st century. Don't ever be Cain, all about you. Don't ever be Bil'am, all about greed. Don't ever be Korah, deny the priesthood. It is the priesthood that changes that bread into, into body and that wine into blood it is the priesthood that forgives the sins by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ by the love of god the father the lord jesus said it read in the gospel of john chapter 20 he said it to the priest that these disciples that he chose not to the entire israelite nation he said wherever you tie if you tie the sins of men they'll be tied in heaven and if you loosen their sins they'll be loosened in heaven he said it to the priest and he blew into them and he said receive the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit for forgiving sins and holding it against men he gave that authority himself to the priesthood rank you come now and tell me the priest is nothing you are korah where is korah now down gone this is the bible it's nothing personal I'm just giving you what Jesus Christ is saying. Please, let's open our eyes and let's bow our heads and ask for forgiveness. While we read these words, repent.
ask the Lord to forgive you say the sins in your heart before him and before the all holy altar and before the priesthood rank say Lord I've done this I've said this I've forgive me let me come being worthy of your body and your blood in the truth amen our good God and full of mercy our good God and full of mercy whose grace and mercy is poured upon all pour my Lord the compassion of the delightfulness of your love upon your servants and again transform them in the hope of renewal to the life of repentance renew in them by your Holy Spirit by whom they are sealed for the day of salvation purify them by your compassion from all flesh and spiritual blemishes and assure the hope of their faith by the aid of your grace and instill the walks of their behavior and the paths of righteousness please them along with the saints in your kingdom by the assurance of the hope of their faith in the adoption as your children and in the joy of your absolving mysteries empower them by the aid of your mercies to observe your commandments and fulfill your will to confess worship and praise your holy name the Lord of all Father and Son and Holy Spirit forever Amen may the Lord Jesus have mercy on us all may the Lord Jesus forgive us and cleanse us and make us worthy to come forth and receive him in the true body and the true blood of Christ the King Amen couple of announcements very quickly um, fasting actually started for the nativity festive season on the 1st of December if you haven't fasted uh, you start catching up from tomorrow and start fasting okay it is good for you it is good for your well-being and fasting means to wait for the word fasting literally means to wait for so we are waiting for the birth of the Messiah I am preparing myself I am getting ready to receive the Messiah in the manger of my heart Lord nobody opened the door for you they were all busy today Lord I'm saying if there is no home to to receive you my heart I make your home please accept I know my heart is filthy I know my heart is dirty I know my heart is filled with spider webs but I ask you Lord with my wretchedness and weakness and foolishness and blindness I give you my heart the way it is because I believe one verse says and so God loved the world the word so means the way the world was he loved it he loved that world with his filth with its dirt with its sinful nature he loved it because God is the father who is all love love is the one that stays and remains forever conquers forever Lord I give you my heart be let it be the manger where you are born raised and reach maturity and perfection and take me with you along the way Lord so fast till the 25th of December you want to be a vegan go for it you want to be a pescatarian go for it but I encourage you to abstain yourself from everything until lunchtime and go vegetarian after that if you can't be all the day for 25 days till lunchtime eat nothing drink nothing after lunch be vegetarian be strong say Lord strengthen me yes discipline your body don't give your body steak all the time it's not good give your body some grass <laughs> vegetables <laughs> well, I'm, a, I'm a pescatarian I haven't died yet I don't eat meat my meat is vegetables I don't die and I'm strong as a horse baby and I've got a license in construction <laughs> Thanks to Sion. <laughs> Be strong. Please, guys, you know, when somebody gets a flu, can you please don't do all these testing and nonsense? Trust the Lord. 
Be strong. You've got a flu. You'll get over it. You will only die when the Lord calls the day. Until the Lord says you're going to die, nobody can kill you. But one thing, you can kill yourself when you become afraid. Fear drives away faith. Then you lose track of Christ. Then the enemy devours. Now I be strong. So what I've got a flu? Sniffing, coughing, who cares? We've got great doctors here. A couple of tablets here and there and that's it. Or get some uh, natural remedies and you'll be fine. Be strong. Take precautious measurements, yes. But don't fear nothing. And anyway, one day we will die. But for me to be so scared because I've got a virus, come on, where is your faith? Where is your faith? During the entire lockdown, I never put a mask on. I never social distanced myself from now on. And I drank from the cup of the Lamb of God where every mouth and probably most of them were sick. And I licked the cup. And for the first time in my entire life, for three years, I never got the flu. Every year prior to this nonsense corona, prior to the pandemic, every year I used to get sick. During this so-called pandemic, I never got sick. <laughs> Thanks, Anthony Fauci. Be strong in the Lord. Entrust him with everything, including you. Including you. Be strong. So start fasting. Go vegan. The virus won't touch you. I'll kill it. And I'll, I'll kill its mother with it. Now, Bible preaching, um, the English Bible preaching, the last one will be on the 16th of December. We are taking a break for three weeks. We're coming back on the 13th of January, 2023, with the Lord's grace. So the last Bible English preaching will be on, uh, on Friday, the 16th of December. Please come. You've got two more weeks. I want to see you, okay? I'll kill you if you don't come. Um, the Assyrian Bible preaching, which is every Monday at 7 p.m. The last one will be on the 12th of December, and we're coming back on the 9th of January, 2023. This is the Assyrian Bible preach. Um, Carols by Candlelight, Saturday the 17th, not long to go. 4 p.m. starts, two hours outside having fun, eating, drinking in, with, uh, in the name of the Lord and enjoying, enjoying the presence of the Lord. 6.30 p.m., all the adults will come into the church. Our beautiful choirs will be singing carol hymns where your children will be looked after by our beautiful committee members that work and operate in this church. So that's why you can sit and be relaxed. Uh, your children will be looked after during that time. If anybody wants us to visit them um, to, their, to their houses and uh, wish them a Merry Christmas, say a little prayer, a couple of minutes there and... Um, and, and say, um, Merry Christmas, please put your name, number, and address. We'll contact you and we'll let you know which day, what time we'll be coming to um, greet you, say a little prayer, and wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. The other one is Holy Land is uh, next year, May 2023. It's two countries, Israel and Greece. Anybody's interested, the window of opportunity is closing very quickly. Put your name and number down. The organizer will contact you about the trip. Two countries, Israel and Greece, May 2023. Divine Heart Sunday School. It is the enrollment for next year is open. Parents with children from the ages of 5 to 16, please enroll your children in the Sunday School for next year, 2023. Lastly, our beloved The Good Shepherd Youth Group Committee. Uh, are organizing a walkathon in January 
of 2023 on the 21st of January, there's going to be a walkathon. It is time to lose some weight, baby. No, just kidding. So um, it'll be on the 21st. It's a Saturday, 21st of January, 2023. Um, and we are walking in the footprints of the Lord Jesus and losing some weight spiritually. We want to be lighter so we can fly higher and higher in the heavens of Christ. Uh, next Friday, uh, the 9th of December, which is next Friday, after the Bible preach is finished, uh, the committee will be taking your details for the walkathon. Okay, so the details will be taken from next Friday after the Bible preach session. Please put your names down and let's have fun. Let's walk. And after the walking, after you walk, you lose two kilos. Then you'll eat. I'll be the chef. I'll make sure you'll put on 20 kilos. And you'll come out chubby like that baby, the nine-month-old baby. I love you. God bless you. But Jesus Christ loves you the most. Thank you.